and mark. Let's get an interesting discussion going now. A Prabhudas Leela, the report indicates that seasonal products that we use like air conditioners, fans, etc. The sales have been impacted because of unseasonal rains. Companies are also witnessing a slowdown in demand and high inventory. To discuss this, we are joined by Nilesh Gupta, the director at Vijay Sales, and Praveen Sahai, the research analyst at Prabhudas Leeradhar. So let me first get Praveen on board because he's the author of that uh, report. Praveen, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what you're observing because, you know, with the heat wave kicking in so early, one would assume that sales of air conditioners, fans, etc. would sort of hit the roof earlier than expected. But um, what is your, what are your channel checks indicating? Yeah, thank you, Sonia. Uh, so, uh, if I talk of uh, uh, Q4, uh, that's uh, because of the muted demand environment and inability to pass on the increased uh, cost. Uh, that has uh, impacted the consumer durable sector as a whole in the quarter four. Uh, and that's also because of uh, unseasonal rain, soft demand, and also the higher inventory of the seasonal products like of RAC and the fans which the companies has built up in the Q3. So Q4 uh, impacted because of that. However, our channel check in the month of April indicates uh, there is uh, some uh, you know decrease in the inventory level in the channel, especially in the RAC. So just to give you numbers like of uh, 40 to 50 days of inventory in month of uh, FAB, which has uh, reduced to around 25 to 30 days uh, as per our channel check, and also the uh, in the April there is a change in the offer and the discount promotions which the brands are providing in the month of March uh, because of uh, some slugness in the demand which has gone from the system. So that also indicates uh, some positive uh, indicator uh, for uh, seasonal products like of uh, RSC especially. Okay. All right. Hi, hi, Praveen. Uh, thanks so much for giving us your view. Well, let's get in Nilesh Gupta as well. Uh, uh, Nilesh, good morning. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. What's your reading of the situation? Uh, you know, Praveen suggests that inventory levels are lower, so I'm getting, guessing demand is uh, strong. Unseasonal rains, did they have some impact? Could you give us your sense? So, good morning, everybody. So, this year we started on a very positive note because in the mid-February onwards only, in the month of February, from mid-February to end-February, we had a good run in, of summer in the west, uh, western part of the country and also slightly in the southern part not so much in the southern part. So what we expected was this year would be one hell of a summer sale, which uh, we expected because it was onset of early summer. But what happened, uh, everybody knows in the month of March, the unseasonal rains came across the country and that dampened the sale to a large extent. And frankly speaking, till a week back, everybody thought that this time the summer season is a washout. But uh, I do not know whether I should say luckily or, uh, luckily or, or not. But now, since the last one week, the summer has once again come with a big vengeance, and we are seeing sales coming up. So yes, the month of February, uh, the month of March, which we have lost, if the summer becomes more intense, we may be able to recover, or there may be a slightly lower sales than expected. But one thing is for sure, the inventory levels right now, nobody does corrections. For the simple reason is, uh, you have uh, summer till the end of May in the entire country, and in the north, the summer still extends till... Uh, June and July. In fact, sometimes it goes up to August also. So corrections of inventory, mm. whether in channel or whether in the brand will not happen now. It will happen uh, post uh, 10th of May, uh, looking at the season. That is the time when retailers and distributors will start uh, cutting down inventories if they feel the season is not going to go as it is. But looking mm. at the last one week, I think we are uh, sitting on a pretty good season now. Mm, yeah, uh, got that point. Relation makes absolute sense that it, this is some Western disturbance spells. I think that have brought in the showers and brought some much-needed relief, actually, uh, in terms of the weather. Uh, but uh, Nilesh, a word on uh, average pricing. What trends are you seeing? Uh, by how much are prices higher over, let's say, the last season? And what's the the customer response to it? So basically, pricing-wise, if you see over last season, we are nearly around seven to eight percent more. But uh, nowadays, in fact, I've told this earlier also on your channel, uh, pricing doesn't matter so much to the consumer because 80% of the sale is happening on EMI. So even when the price goes up, the corresponding effect on the consumer's wallet is not so much because uh, the price gets, uh, the payment gets uh, divided into 18 to 24 months or 12 to 24 months. 
So price is not a, that big a worry for us right now. And one thing is for sure, now at least the prices have stabilized. So there's no uh, worry of the prices going up again. So I think we are, uh, it all now being a seasonal product, it all depends upon the intensity of the summer and nothing else. Nilesh, is it is it still, uh, you know, you said 80% of the, the purchasing is happening on EMI. Are we still talking uh, zero cost EMIs? Because otherwise, obviously, interest rates are higher. But is that the, the primary funding model, uh, your, your zero interest EMI? Yes, yes, it's zero zero interest EMI, zero down payment also in some uh, cases, and okay. a long tenor. Clear the tenors of zero used to be only eight months, but now we are extending up to 12 to 24 months also in certain categories. Oh. Okay. Uh, Praveen, from the listed space and the stocks that you track, where do you see the maximum potential, both in terms of valuation headroom as well as growth here on? Yeah, so uh, in our coverage, uh, we like a uh, Havels uh, over here uh, because of uh, because they are the one diversified uh, throughout the different product basket, and in them, uh, the wire and cable from the last couple of quarters is doing well and expected to do well uh, because of the one the real estate story as well as the B two B segment uh, which uh, which are going to outperform and in the Q four also done very well. Secondly, on the uh, their ECD portfolio, it's largely on the fan segment, and with these regulatory norm change in the B side, uh, they are going to get benefit out of that as well. Uh, because uh, of late, in the last three years, they had uh, ex excessively increased their distribution network under Rudolf Bistar. So on that front, also we are expecting some uh, improvement uh, in the top line for them. Apart from that, the lawyer which has gained the market share for them and definitely uh, we understand that there is uh, uh, losses, continuous losses with the lawyer. But uh, as for the management as well, that's these losses will slowly will minimize. And we are also expecting uh, the losses related to the lawyer will minimize with the opening of their uh, new manufacturing units in the South. So some logical benefit they will receive. So uh, overall, uh, I believe that's uh, out of all our coverage, uh, uh, heavens to outperform from here onwards. Uh, okay, all right, uh, Praveen, I wanted to ask you about Blue Star. You know, we get the management and they have been telling us that they've been gaining market share. Now they're putting incremental capacity. Do you see a market share shift? Maybe Blue Star gains and Voltas lose, loses out or do you think someone else will uh, lose out in terms of market share? So you are rightly uh, pointed out that's a blue star which has uh, performed very well in terms of the uh, market share uh, over the last uh, two and a half, three years. And with the opening of their or the commissioning of their uh, uh, manufacturing unit uh, in the south and their target also to improve their market share from 13.3% to 15%. Uh, so I also believe that so the competitive intensity in the southern market is going to increase, uh, for especially for the Voltas, uh, because uh, not only the Blue Star, the Lawyer, Daikin, they are also coming up with their uh, manufacturing uh, units in the south. And uh, we will see uh, some uh, logistical benefit for them, and that definitely will give a competition to the Voltas uh, in terms of the market share. Uh, so definitely the Blue Star, uh, the first mover to get the commission their uh, manufacturing unit and we'll see some market share shift as well for them. Uh, Praveen, just before we wrap, uh, my, my final question to you, uh, what are you expecting in terms of uh, margins for a lot of these durable companies? I mean, we'll also hear from them as we get through the earnings season. But in general, uh, what are the trends like on margins, keeping uh, commodity costs in mind? Uh, so uh, in the entire uh, durable space, uh, we will see some around uh, um, 30 to 40 percent of uh, improvement on sequential basis in the margin. Whereas on the YO side, we still uh, see some uh, 70 to 80 bips of uh, deterioration in the margin. Uh, because the one, the copper prices, uh, which has uh, gone back, and that's an increase. However, uh, some of the segments like of a wire and cable, which are able to pass on the prices, they had taken already uh, three to four percent of a price hike in the fourth quarter. So there would be no much of an impact, or even I can say they will benefit in the margin side. Whereas the other segments in the ECD side, 
uh, with the elevation in the cost and the demand sentiment uh, quite muted, uh, we are expecting the overall sector to see some kind of a detrition on the YUI side in the margin front. Okay, okay. all right, uh, got that. Thank you very much, uh, Nilesh and uh, Praveen, for joining in and giving us your sense of the consumer durables market and, of course, how uh, different companies are poised. Mm -hmm. The market, by the way, is getting 